Callahan, three, two, one. Hi everyone, we're here at High Tech in Orlando, Florida, and I'm sitting here with Tim Sullivan, CEO at Sendines. Tim, thank you so much for taking the time joining me here. Absolutely, great to see you. Great to have you. And we like to kick this off usually with getting a big, a bit of an idea of your background, your personal one. Sure. So tell us a bit about how, how, how did you come here, that you are with Sendines as a CEO, and what, what was your journey so far? Yeah, I've been in technology for about 25 years it started in the mid 90s uh, when the web was just coming into its co commercial uh, right. being that we know today exciting and times. yeah it was very exciting it's kind of the wild west so i kind of learned the technology as we went along and um, spent time at ntt communications the big japanese telecom company right. i've done a startup been in a uh, kind of large company and uh, startup environments mm -hmm. uh, throughout my career, always in software, media, and technology. So I met Sendine. Um, I actually grew up in Florida, I which w they were headquartered. I met the founders, and they brought me on board to help build out their digital marketing um, business back 13 years ago. I've been with the company for a while, and yeah, uh, it's, started, it's been incredibly successful and, and very exciting. And the travel space, the hospitality space is just it's a fun industry. It's an industry um, that can foster a lot of innovation because in some ways it's behind other industries in the technology and the interoperability of systems, but that creates an opportunity as well. Cause, so there's a lot of value to unlock. And, you know, travel's a, it's such a core to, to all of our lives, right? I always talk about why do we really travel? We travel for weddings, funerals, job interviews, family vacations. There's, it, it's the centerpiece of this kind of connection in our lives. And through technology, we can, we can elevate that experience and make it better. And that really gets me excited. Yeah, and it's very true. And you just mentioned it, right? You said the opportunity for innovation is there. Yeah. And it's, it's always super interesting to hear, like, what are you, what's your thoughts? Like, what are the, the main opportunities you're seeing for travel? And how do we how do we move forward in that field? Yeah, we're in a really interesting time, right? It's been a very tough couple years for the industry. And then coming out of it, with all of the pent-up demand coming back, that's creating new challenges, right? Um, talk to a lot of people here about their flight experience and flights being canceled and service delivery has been impacted. Well, at the same time, according to McKinsey, digital transformation globally has accelerated yes three to seven years over the past couple years, right? So the, the expectation of consumers that they can have their service delivered in a digital right. uh, experience has been elevated. And so think about your experience with a ride hailing app like Uber. It's super personalized, it's frictionless, the payment's seamless, um, there's a lot of data points. You know your driver's name, they know your name. There's, you can rate each other. Yes. And then you, you walk out of that Uber into a hotel that you've stayed at 50 times before and they say, hey, have you stayed with us before? So there's this disconnect in the level of experience. So with digital transformation accelerating um, and consumers' expectations being elevated, there's a real opportunity for hotels to um, invest in technology, automation, and personalization to elevate that guest experience uh, to that same level that, that people have become accustomed to. They're understaffed. Right. They, they're forced to do more with less. So what we're hearing from our partners is we want fewer trusted technology partners that can execute more use cases for us mm -hmm. because our teams are either much smaller or We've had a lot of people leave the industry and their people are new to the industry and there's a training issue. So I think the number I read was the, the hospitality industry, you know, rev par and ADR is double digits ahead of where it was in 2019, yet 9% lower in, in employment. So there's, a, there's a real challenge. disconnect there. Yeah, it's a huge challenge that I, I believe technology can solve. Yes, and it's not a challenge I think they will fix easily or that it will change sooner. It's something we have to just get accustomed to. That they're That's right, and, and, teams for and be smart about how do you leverage that smarter team so they can focus on the, the high value activities. I always believe technology, in, especially in the hospitality space, it's not about replacing 
humans, it's about elevating the experience by kind of the, the human and the, and, the, and the technology combination. I'll give you an example. Um, you know, one of our core products is a, a customer data platform. Right. So we synthesize all of the data from all of the systems into a, a unified profile, profile right. right? So if you can take that profile and get it to the front lines of the business wherever it's needed, those people who are interacting face to face with the guests can have a deeper, more meaningful interaction because they have the data at their fingertips. So there's ways to, you know, maybe you don't need as you don't need a guest services person, you don't need a concierge, you don't need all these people trying to figure it out or writing it down or keeping it in spreadsheets and reports. All the data is there at your fingertips when yes. you need it. Yeah. Plus, it makes the work also nicer for the teams as you remove mundane tasks and they feel empowered to just. Offer guest experience. That's exactly right. They are passionate about in the end, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And talking about guest experience, I mean, you are a person yourself that travels a lot, most a likely. Lot. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you are in the travel industry. Yeah. So we are always very keen to also learn a bit more about the personal background. So if you would share like your favorite travel experience or something that really you can't forget, something that's really unique, is there something you can share? <laughs> that's like asking what's your favorite song or what's yeah, your is. favorite yeah, color. It's very that's challenging. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm about to go on a trip next week, and right. it's a trip that my wife and I take. Mm -hmm. um, I think this will be our fifth year taking it, and it's very special because it combines uh, a, a couple different elements. There's a bit of a family reunion, so we go up to the, the northeast in the U.S. here to Connecticut, and my family all gathers for the 4th of July celebration. But after that, we go up we drive two hours north into the Catskills to mm -hmm. Mohonk Mountain House, which is an amazing resort, 150 years old. Wow. It's been in the same Quaker family wow. for five generations, and they've acquired tens of thousands of acres of the land around this resort and put hiking trails. And mm -hmm. it's just this incredible oasis, very special place. Sounds and amazing. I'm about to go there, so that's at the... That's top of it's mind for me. Exciting yeah, and I've, this will be the fifth time, so you can tell it's it's something special. And they know your name when you arrive. They do. They yeah, do. they're <laughs> sending customers as oh, well, right. so of so course they, they do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> great. That's right. Thank you so much, Tim. It was great talking to you. Thank you, likewise. Yeah.